when did you come to the Alexander Technique and where did you train? So, as a matter of fact, I had a back accident mm -hmm. and after a while uh, of a, uh, suffering and, you know, things helped, but there was something still wrong. Mm -hmm. I went to visit my family in Israel mm -hmm. and in Israel everybody knows everything. And I came back with a telephone number and address also of Patrick McDonald. Mm. And I called and I went to have a lesson and I was overwhelmed. And I said to my husband, this is what I wanted all my life, only I didn't know it existed. I was so over the moon. And I had lessons for quite a while. And in these uh, six weeks that I went and had lessons with him twice a week, mm -hmm. six, seven weeks, something like that, I didn't think at all about training at the time. I was only concerned about my back accident. Mm -hmm. And what year was that? 1976. Mm -hmm. It must be 1976. Mm -hmm. Maybe 75, but I still, I think 76. Mm -hmm. Sort of September, mm -hmm. 76. And um, he... He was extremely uh, helpful. Mm -hmm. He was extremely kind to me. Oh, uh, he did with me so many things that people afterwards told me he never did any of that with us. Like he taught me to squat against the door. He taught me uh, all sorts of activities that people say that, you, you know, they, oh, he never said, he never do, did that with me. Mm -hmm. And, um, I continued to have lessons with him until actually uh, December uh, of this year. So I came in the beginning twice a week and then uh, once a week I started to visit the class. And then various things have happened and I continue to have lessons with uh, John Skinner. Oh, really? And uh, I had lessons with John Skinner and then I started to think uh, um, about training mm. and uh, eventually uh, Misha Magidov opened his school in London mm. and it was John Skinner who said to me he it will suit you actually mm. I feel that this will be the right place for you mm -hmm. and I went to Misha and uh, that was that the following month I started my training and this was in um, April 81. Wow. So I finished in March 84. Lovely. And that was the North London School, I think it was mm. called. Yes, it was. Yeah. And, and so had you already been interested in movement or did you come to the movement before the Alexander training? No, I came to movement long before I came to Alexander training. I was interested in movement actually all my life, mm -hmm. from a very young age. Mm -hmm. um, in Israel at the time when I grew up, a lot of Feldenkrais work mm -hmm. was about and around. As a uh, 13 or 14 years old girl, in, yeah, it was immediately after the, um, the, war, the, 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 the 48 war, right. I found a teacher not far from me whose name was Lotte Christeller, who had an enormous influence on the movement and movement teaching uh, at the time in, in Israel in these years. She was a, a very influential woman, and she also worked with Feldenkrais. Ah, so were you, ha you were having regular I lessons? was having regular lessons with her during my youth, wow. until I went to the army. Mm -hmm. And then after I uh, finished my uh, service in, in, the, in the army, I, went to, I became a student in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and in no time I was looking for something like that. Mm -hmm. And I found another person who was doing an amazing movement work. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows about her outside Israel. About Lotte Christella, maybe yes, because she worked together with Judith Binetter, who became f 
quite actually, he, she worked here in England as well. Mm -hmm. uh, her name was Chaya Strauss. She deserves an, a, a, a tribute from me because mm -hmm. she, she had, and also a lot of Feldenkrais work was around me. And I had, uh, 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 even through the university, we had some um, sort of, you could choose some kind of physical activity. And I chose a class where they taught, uh, it was an, some kind, looking back at it, I didn't know even at the time that it was Feldenkrais. Mm. But Does looking it back at it, it was Feldenkrais work. And it was sort of integrated into the movement classes. Uh, yes, oh yes, that, that we did. Love. That we did. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know about it at the time. Mm -hmm. It's only afterwards that I found out, actually, I was doing Feldenkrais <laughs> work. Isn't it one that was interesting? Mm -hmm. And um, when we came to England, I continued to look for an outlet for this interest of mine, which was a hobby, in a way, recreational, rather. Yeah. And I uh, found Meadow Rhythmic Movement. Mm -hmm. Also by a total coincidence, mm -hmm. uh, I found it. Uh, and it, and where, wh who was the founder of that work? Meadow was, uh, his name was Heinrich Meadow, uh -huh. and he was the founder in Germany mm -hmm. in the 20s and 30s. Uh -huh. His whole ideas about movement are very similar you can say, mm. to the ideas of Laban mm. and Dalcroze and Rudolf Steiner. Right. And he develops his own method, mm. which is called Meadow, Meadow Rhythmic Movement. Mm. Right. It is a very, very nice form of movement. Mm. I had a very good teacher in, in, in London mm. who trained with him mm -hmm. in Germany. Mm. Uh, at the moment, they are. Um, he had a school before the war in Berlin, mm -hmm. but after the war, he settled in Coburg. You know, in uh, not far from the border with e what was East Berlin at the time. Right. East uh, Germany, sorry, yeah. East Germany, and uh, you have to look at. Uh, this movement, I mentioned these four names, there were many others. Mm. They were looking for a form of movement that what they thought was natural yes. and away from the Swedish type exercises mm. that were common then yes. as part of physical education. Yes. Lots of people would have heard of Eurythmy, weren't they? That, that exactly. It's, mm. it, yeah. And yeah, there were other people who had very similar ideas, mm -hmm. but each one of them developed their own way of, of movement mm -hmm. and of teaching it, mm -hmm. actually. So you were practicing this meadow movement, and yes. then you came to your Alexander. That's work. right. And, then and I was already by that time a teacher wow. of meadow rhythmic wow. movement, because I started after I came across it, after a while, my teacher opened a small training course and she invited me to join the course. Wonderful. And I joined it and I trained with her. Mm -hmm. And at that time, through this teacher, mm -hmm. I was introduced to uh, work with pregnant women ah. because one day she gave me a book to read mm -hmm. and it was by Erna Wright Mm -hmm. My teacher, by the way, her, her name was Beryl Smith, and she died since, and she also deserved a bit of a tribute because she had also a great influence on, mm -hmm. on my way of, of learning mm -hmm. and continuing and developing. Mm -hmm. And um, she brought me this book by Erna Wright, uh, something about childbirth. I don't remember the title at the moment. It's a famous book, but probably out of print. Mm -hmm. And I was beyond uh, bearing, uh, at the age of bearing children. I had two young children, but I was a little bit uh, intrigued. So my teacher gave me a book, I read it. And then I came back and I wanted to give her back the book. And she asked me, what did you think about it? I said, well, it was very interesting. And I think, you know, we've got a lot to offer here. 
And she said, yes, and you are going to do it. <laughs> and I said, how? She said, have you noticed that the back of the book there is an address for the National Childbirth Trust? You call them mm. and you talk to them. So I did. Mm. Te teacher said. <laughs> mm. So I did. I was intrigued, really. Mm. And I uh, eventually I trained as an NCT, NCT teacher, mm. National Childbirth Trust, which was well, childbirth education. Yeah. And um, and then I started my training in the Alexander Technique. And so you began to integrate. And then I just really put things. two and two together. Mm. I really did not intend it to be like that. Mm. It just happened. Mm. Because once I was already a childbirth educator and I came across the technique, I just realized that we, if the primary control is not maintained, mm -hmm. then we can, well, we can do it, of course we can, but it's not the same. No. And uh, that's how I started to develop the whole of my movement um, all my thoughts about movement. Mm. I want to tell you that it all really started with childbirth. Yeah. I did not introduce it to the Alexander Technique. It until later. Until later. Mm. I first of all integrated it to childbirth mm. because when you are in pain, mm. you cannot sit quietly and direct. No. Oh, you can, but for this you need to be, well, many, many years into the technique. Mm. Of course, mm. you can. You can inhibit mm. and direct. Mm. But the majority of people are not there. Mm. And it is easier for them to maintain the primary control in the movement. Mm. So I started to think about movements that will help mm. during the pain of contractions mm in which we can maintain the primary control and continue to think about length, width, and depth. Mm -hmm. And really everything came together from that. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly I found myself that I've got, I'm developing some kind of movement mm -hmm. that is lovely. Mm -hmm. And with all this background that I had, mm -hmm. so these are the things that when you ask me what I, before when you mentioned to me what did you use, you haven't yet asked me this question, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but you mentioned it in passing that, yes. yeah, uh, yeah, what do I use? It really is, I did not uh, invent anything. I just put two and two mm -hmm. together and came to what I'm doing at the moment. So it's like a sort of integration of, of all your disciplines and interests that have sort of become the yeah. way you teach. Yeah, mm. yeah. So can I ask you, um, so after you trained and then you were teaching childbirth and you were teaching Alexander and all these things, and then eventually you came to open a training school. Yes. And you began to integrate movement within the day of the training. That's right. And how do you find that enhances the Alexander training? Yeah. Um, I, I think that uh, while you move in a rhythmic way, mm. because if you've noticed, there is rhythm in yes. all the movements that you've already got on, on the video. Yes. It enhances the flow of movement. We go a little bit beyond everyday movement. Yes. In Alexander days, uh, people moved much more. And the range of movement was wider. Yes. They walked more. They still had to do lots of things and activities mm. that used a wider range of movement yeah. than we are doing now. 
And and as you said at the tea break, they they would have had meals and well, and well, together apparently, <laughs> apparently, we learned that. Yeah. We are talking now about teaching uh, the Alexander technique, and in all our work, it is for everyday activities. Yeah. Our everyday activities became more and more limited. Mm. So I think that for my student, I would have expected them to have a better range of movement. Yeah. And in what I'm thinking about in the movement that's, that I am teaching mm. is to maintain the primary control, the length, mm. whatever helps the back to lengthen, mm. and at the same time on a wider range of everyday activity. I'll give you a, 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 the simplest example of all. Mm. Even office workers mm. before the 50s, mind you, I see a great change from the 50s right. in the design of furniture, yeah. in the fact that we drive more and more cars mm. and we sit at the wheel yeah. for, for, uh, an hour, for longer periods of time. Yeah. So, I, I think that um, we lose a range of movement and I meet young people who haven't got already the full range of the movement of the arm. Mm. And I just think this is, this is ridiculous. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Mm. So you're finding that bringing this, as you say, slightly extra than everyday movement, this is sort of yeah. enhancing everyday movement, this movement into the training course is is informing people's Alexander work. Exactly. Mm. And it also creates a better flow, yes. if you like, mm. in, in, in them. Now, I don't teach my private pupil who come to me necessarily any movement unless they ask for it or unless it's for music students who really need to go beyond yeah. because otherwise repetitive strain injury will set in. Yes. So with all the, the music students that I have, I teach them movement also to release during uh, rehearsals. Mm -hmm. And I just got a very nice feedback from Poppy who said that during rehearsals now she doesn't, she found out that before she, I taught her these movements. She was just sitting there thinking about directions and actually sitting and being a little bit tired and becoming stiffer with it. And now, instead of if she's got only two, three, four m m minutes in which she can release, she just go into one of these movements and it, it is very, very helpful. Oh, so it was, it's nice yeah. feedback. And, th and that kind of brings me on to the, the, another question, which is um, where do you see the possibilities of, of the, the integration of the, the movement and Alexander going in the future? Do you feel you'll keep it as part of the training school and your students will have that as part of their repertoire in their teaching? If they wish, mm -hmm. if they wish. What I'm looking for is that they are able to create and to improvise very simple movements uh, from w with the ideas that, that they learn here yeah, yeah. and that it will help to improve the use of, their se of the self mm -hmm. in all their activities. Mm -hmm. So I really expect for that it will enhance their teaching, yeah. their own ability to teach and their own flow and directions, Fantastic. which I hope. You know, since I came to the Alexander Technique and with this background in movement, I was naturally interested in doubt procedure. Mm. And I started to study them. We, uh, we had uh, sessions uh, in, the, in the school with Jean Clark. Mm and I uh, had uh, several um, workshops with the Maris. And uh, I uh, st uh, st uh, started to think more about the spirals in movement. Mm. 
And then I started to observe again toddlers and young children. And I noticed that until the age of about two, I mean, we all know it, only it was re-learning it, re-observing. I knew it, and then it went out, like many other things. Re-observing and watching them, I realized that, of course, what I said before, we all know, that children cannot learn any motor development unless they have the primary control, mm. because they cannot move before the head is balanced on the top of the spine. Mm. They cannot con continue to develop movement. Mm. They have the primary control unconsciously. Mm. It is not that it is they are aware of it. Yeah. They just have it. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, it's in us. Yes. At the same time, I noticed that they move a lot with the spirals. Mm. They are not, for instance, for when they learn to sit up, they never come up in a, like a sitting up. Mm. They always roll direct with the head mm. and come up into sitting. Mm. And then from there, they take themselves into the crawl. So all the time, it's the primary control with the spirals working together. Mm. And so this is something that I've added a little bit more into the, 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 the movement that I am teaching. Mm. And we also do some flow work in this school, which I don't know, uh, occasionally, not uh, every day. We start with a movement for about 15 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes, but not much more. Mm. We walk a little bit. We Instead of meditating, we, we walk a little bit and then we, we start the day. We okay. stop, find a moment of peace and start the day. Mm -hmm. But about once a week or once a fortnight, we do a little bit of floor work mm -hmm. in which I also incorporate these ideas mm -hmm. of um, okay. primary control, lengthening and spiral movement. Mm -hmm. It's very beautiful to see that, that even when you're taking people in and out of chairs or just describing monkey, that you, you have a spiral within that movement often, don't you? The, uh, well, I'm now thinking more about yeah, it. Very interesting. But do you feel we've covered everything that you wanted to say? Is there anything else you... One more like thing that I would like to add. Yes. Learning again from children, yes. I want to, t to say two things about yes. it. I believe that we all store in us the memories of moving well with the primary control, mm. although it was on an unconscious level. Yes. We store it in us. Mm. And therefore, it is sometimes very nice in the teaching mm. and with absolutely everybody mm. to create in a little bit of an artificial way a childlike um, way of learning, mm. which is with the curiosity mm. and the unknown. Mm. Lovely. And I, I think that uh, it is very, I often explain it to people, I say, we have to create occasionally artificial situation for learning. Yes. Uh, and in a way the inhibition creates that space for the learning, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And rather than just the information. Of course. Yeah. The, the movement uh, is enhancing that space, that to sort of enhance, I suppose in a way that the movement helps us define actually inhibition. Is I think, it yes, it helps us. Inhibition is a very difficult concept. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the the technique is all about inhibition. Yeah. yeah, it's all about inhibition. In other words, it's inhibiting the reaction to any stimulation. Yeah. But you know, we don't always have to say it no. all the time. It is just there yeah. for you to, to rediscover. To rediscover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been so lucky because you've helped me not just with. Um, Alexander and with movement, but also with childbirth. Oh, know. thank you. So I've yeah. been so fortunate. Thank you. It's very sweet of you to say it. Lovely. Thank <laughs> you.
and the rhythm the rhythm is so important because in in a funny sort of way Alexander can be very rhythmic including the breath and of course uh, I think a good Alexander lesson mm -hmm. has rhythm yes I agree it has rhythm mm -hmm. it has a warm up it it comes into a sort of a, if you like crescendo or mm -hmm. something like that and it dies away again and it gathers force again a good Alexander a lesson has rhythm mm -hmm. well, and uh, I, re I really think so yeah I think that's a very beautiful place to end. Yeah. Thank you so 